So, like, uh, how many of the like how your how your assets are hosted? Like, they are on the same domain as the code is running on, or they are on CDNs or some other cross. So, like, how how the code is hosted on? Like, it's on the same domain, or it's apart from the other domain, uh, like some CDN servers or. Okay, so there's a like the problem itself is like uh, when you are in co when your code is hosted on uh, third party CDN like something uh, the domain or different protocol or different like uh, subdomain. So the problem is like when you try to catch exceptions, the the problem the browser doesn't allow to give it doesn't give proper information of of an exception. And normally the exception catching in JavaScript works. There's a window dot on error listener which is uh, which give you all the information. So with window dot on error, the the only problem is like it's it's uh, the as web has evolved like m people are moving to minified code and people are moving to CDNs to host their JavaScript and uh, the static assets. So it's becoming the window dot on error. No, no, no. Uh, the import the window dot on error is like a waste. Uh, like it's not good enough for uh, like knowing what's going what wrong in the website uh, on the in the JavaScript applications. So the, the so here uh, like the biggest problem is uh, uh, due to the security reasons browser doesn't give you enough information it gives you script error if you some might might have uh, like uh, aware of this problem so like uh, it it's it, the three things are uh, window dot onload uh, on the gives is line number the correct the column number and the file name so uh, and the error message so like uh, if, if you are on if the if your uh, the code breaks uh, is hosted on some other origin the browser doesn't give the even the uh, file name file name and uh, it give the file name it doesn't give uh, the error message and doesn't give the line number so so the problem uh, let me So the problem is again the when you are working with third or cross origin scripts, the script that hosted on anything that's not the same as the current uh, host or current origin. So in during that time, you didn't get proper information. So how to get that information to your uh, how to collect the proper information? So first. Uh, so. The first strategy you can use is uh, you, the, all the third-party scripts that all the cross-origin scripts uh, you can fetch from your or you have hosted a proxy at your own server or you copy paste that code in your own server and then fetch from your own same origin so you can uh, easily get collect information. This is a hack, not a good way to do things and it probably doesn't work with third-party plugins or third-party scripts because sometimes these uh, plugins also load much more code and uh, it's it, it might not be good approaches for like you are you're trying to use jquery from other domains uh, like google hostings or other things so this this, this is a pretty tricky thing but uh, it might work for some people but it's not a good solution so other good solution is uh, wrap the whole uh, like if your uh, code is you are hosted on third party CDN you have the right, right access to the code one thing you can do is wrap that code inside try catch the whole code inside try catch so when you are doing that, the try catch thing is like uh, whenever anything breaks in that code. So the the, the catch will the as it is wrapped inside the try catch thing, it the catch loop will accept uh, handle the exception, catch the exception even before the window error got it. So you have uh, a location where you can extract information. The exception catch by the try catch thing. You can do anything you, you want with it. It doesn't have to be the cross origin problem doesn't come there it's a one step before the window error got it so like you can extract all kind of information and use it to report to any way you want it to be and uh, but the problem comes with the, this kind again is if you are working with jquery hosted from a cdn pro or some other uh, anything you don't have the right access to so this again the, the so the, here comes the third solution so the third, third solution is try to wrap the objects like let's say you have a jquery object you loaded it and uh, now uh, jquery has many apis every api has every api uh, i meant from api i meant uh, the function the jquery dot uh, 
let's say CSS, jQuery dot any function. So what normally what happens is we have to interact. We normally use these APIs, to, uh, and API interfaces, uh, make calls and get our data. So if you want to track exceptions in these files, so uh, mostly the interfaces lock install some try catching mechanism on the interfaces of these APIs. So when you give a, send a call to it, if anything breaks, you you can uh, if the interfaces have a try catch installed in them. You can easily get the whole. Uh, ex you can catch the exception even cut off before the window dot owner get it. So that that's a simple thing. So for how to do that, so uh, a simple try catch wrapper, uh, a simple. Uh, so like uh, the way we do it, like this is an example. So let's say this is a human object. It has some properties and some methods. So and. Uh, as you can see, bot, uh, this, this, this is project dot track human. This is the this is the track API I have implemented for my like uh, for my product right now. So this, this is nothing else. It do it uh, it it, it follow up all the functions and install all the APIs of that uh, object. Uh, it browse through all the APIs of that object and install a try catch on every function. And uh, so now, if anything breaks, someone call this API. If anything breaks in that process, it, the the catch the the, the, the whole the, st the all the exception is handled catched at that place and reported immediately. So you don't have to like uh, rewrite the code. Like this is a small line of code you add after your code. You don't have to modify anything. It just uh, hack that just work like flawlessly with the, your existing code base without touching anything. In so in this way, you can catch the exact problem. You get the exact information, like which line number, even the stack trace. You can all you can extract all 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 sort of information uh, that is available uh, as same as your same origin browsers, like same origin scripts. So this is uh, this is the thing I'm talking. About. Uh, this is the this is all about like uh, uh, tracking with the third party scripts. So uh, even you see, see the script error kind of a problem. So you don't don't face if you are use these three techniques like you can easily get away with the script error problem. So the tax all any questions? Questions anyone? Like uh, so it's useful stuff. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, so plus, plus you have to modify this function, so you are manually actually creating uh, objects which throw errors, right? So, like the. No, he just, I, I guess he just wraps each function inside a. Try catch thing. Try catch on top of that. Like, uh, uh, most of the time it's uh, adding a one more front end, like uh, adding a more gateway kind of thing in front of every API. So, that so anything before the API is called, that gateway is called. So, so I don't know one more thing, like, uh, I don't know if it is true or false. But when I see um, minified, uh, minified uh, scripts from some other server being yes, uh, yes, yes. on my server, so there's, a, there's an option like curly basis in the Chrome console, which you do beautify. Yeah, exactly. Beautify. You can do then, that. Uh, you can set debugger over there, right? Yes, but uh, when you are you no, no, it's it's it works. But when your your users are using your code, uh, you like the debugger is not on, and you how do you want to catch errors at that point of time? It's kind of a production environment I'm talking about, so not the development environment. Okay. So I guess the only question is in a non-trivial app, which has like thousands of lines of JavaScript. Yes. Uh, it seems a very invasive kind of. So actually, uh, I'm talking about the end interfaces most libraries even jquery has 20 30 interfaces something like that so even as big library as jquery doesn't have much interfaces like internal code you don't have to wrap only the, ex the interfaces or even the system interfaces anything like uh, the user is interacting with or the api is interacting with the uh, like the dom apis or some uh, browser apis wrap those interfaces and you are good to go with uh, most of the things so uh, how do you track the events let's say uh, Actually, you can uh, like uh, mostly the event handling part are done by some of the browser native APIs, right? right. There's like some people use set timeouts, uh, some use set intervals, or even some other window.ready. So you can easily wrap these functions. 
like uh, it may not be a direct way using the track API that I mentioned, but it's easy to wrap these functions. Or even someone using these APIs, like uh, even uh, I did uh, wrapping around uh, set interval and set timeout with easy, and uh, most like you get most of the, the errors. Yeah. The thing is, like, just if I'm embedding some third party APIs, yes. right, or if I'm providing a third party API, I yeah. want to capture those um, uh, errors when, when uh, that those JavaScripts are part. Mm -hmm. So it becomes really difficult just doing this because uh, they may be, you know, loaded to an you, you script tag or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, async way. Yes. And in that case, you still need to know what objects are being uh, embedded by that JavaScript. Yes. So mostly, if you're using the third-party APIs, right? So they mostly have uh, one or two global objects, not more than that. Mostly. Yeah, but then generally they don't ex expose those to you directly in a documented way. So if they change the code in their side, so like the the, the way I like you, all you have to do take an object, browse through all the functions, just a for loop through all the functions, and install that uh, wrapper on that uh, all the functions uh, that uh, that are the immediate functions of that particular object. So you don't have to know at least, uh, exactly what's going like is there. Uh, it, a simple for loop will do that, and it's a one-time thing. Uh, you're talking invasive, right? It's a one-time thing. It do install one time, and that's done. Like it's nothing happens after that. Only some exception breaks out, then then it will do something. So it's it's a uh, like a uh, small like it's it's not uh, something memory intensive or something not 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 of that kind. But it's useful enough to provide much more information that that's not available right now. So this gives me a hint on uh, JavaScript source maps, if you have heard. Uh, source maps? How is it different from JavaScript source maps? Source map has nothing to do with what I just mentioned. The, the source maps, what exactly source map is all about? Uh, if you have a minified code, you can see that code. That minified can be code can be from other domain. Right? Yes, exactly, exactly. You can what that can source right? map is when you are developing, right? You're in a development environment. That is where source maps come in. I'm talking about specifically the production environment you code in code is in. No one is going to open your console, and no your users are getting some error. You click a button, something breaks. So how source map doesn't help you there. Source map comes in the part like you get the exception, you get the minified stack trace. Now if you have you generating your source maps or your minified code, you can use that source map to extract, uh, remap that whole uh, minified stack trace to the original source files. Source maps comes later part, not in that scenario. Okay. So try catches. Uh, I think JIT compilers right now, if they encounter try catches, they yes. won't do optimizations on the Yes, body. so the easy part, uh, there's a small hack, like, uh, like uh, there's a, you can wrap everything, the whole code inside a function and call that function inside try catch. So that function is optimized, oh, okay. so one function call is not... Uh, not the whole code part, just the, yes, yes. Just the part in text where it's written try catch, that oh. won't get out. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you very much. So last but not least, uh, flash talk by <laughs> Siju, who is going to introduce you guys to Dev Mira. Okay. Um, 